What's going on guys, Hyper here, and in this video, I will show you my add-on and weak aura setup for Mythic Plus. Let's get started. Over the last week, I got really interested in doing Mythic Plus again because I took quite a long break from it and I wanted to get back in it and push some high keys. So I overhauled my entire Mythic Plus setup uh, from what you guys might have seen on stream or in previous videos and kind of improved it a little bit to be more suitable for pushing high keys and give me some better information on things I'd like to track in Mythic Plus. First of all, let's go over all of the add-ons. I use LVI for my party frames, but really anything works, even stock, if you set it up correctly to show class health by colors, and if you scale it enough for it to be visible and then place it in a good spot, obviously. And then if you're a healer, you might want to use some sort of healing add-on. Um, but as long as your party frames are visible and you can easily track your party's debuffs and their HP, then you should be good to go. The second add-on that I use is Little Wigs. Um, if you use DBM, you that just comes with a dungeon package. But if you use Big Wigs in Raid, then you need to install the dungeon plugin, which is called Little Wigs. And this is just to track abilities on bosses. Um, I think it also tracks a few of the trash pack abilities, but it, those are not as important because we'll have weak auras for those. Um, then for my keystone tracker, I have angry keystones. There's a few different add-ons that you can use here, but this is the one I prefer the most. It just shows the affixes, the deaths, uh, along with how much time you lost due to deaths. And then of course shows you how much you have until you two chest or three chest. And then at the end of the dungeon, it gives you a small report of like, maybe if you missed the one chest, it gives you the exact time of how much you missed it by. It's just a nice little add-on. And it also does something very useful, which is marking the enemy mobs health bars with the percent that they provide when you kill them towards completion. So, for example, if you're at the end of a dungeon and you need 1.5%, you've killed all of the bosses and you thought you were done, but you need 1.5%, then you can quickly hover over a mob and tell how much percent it will give you if you kill it. Um... Then probably the most important add-on that I recommend is weak auras. And you've you've seen me talk about this add-on or you've heard me talk about it. And I always share my weak auras because this add-on is absolutely insane. Can do pretty much anything as long as you know how to code it. And we'll be using this to set up a few different things. So first of all, in Mythic Plus, you want to track interrupts. And along with interrupts, I also prefer to track Cephus because a lot of classes run Cephus in Mythic Plus since you can proc it on cooldown, basically. And I like to have a tracker. I'm using Naga's uh, weak aura for this. All, for all of the weak aura links, by the way, they will be in the description box, so you don't have to look around for them on Wago. But yeah, so for interrupt and Cephus, I will be using Naga's, which you can see over here on my left side of the screen next to the party frame. I have the nice little Cephus tracker next to the name of the person and then the interrupt ability uh, icon with a little progress bar next to it. Another weak core I like to use is the extra equipment sets and this just allows you to save more sets than the default uh, Blizz UI allows. Not sure exactly how this works but as long as you just import the weak aura, it will open up a bunch of new set slots for you. Uh, this is especially good if you're Blood DK because, as you might know, Blood DKs have like four or five, even six sets that we can use in Mythic Plus and we have to alternate between them. Uh, most of the time it's only like three or four, but you can have multiple saved and if you play multiple specs, you might run out of uh, space really quick. And this weak aura just helps out with that. The next two add-ons here, or the weak auras, are kind of tied together, which is the nameplate target and the targeted cast tracker. So one of them will just put an icon on your party frames if some ab important ability is targeted at a party member. For example, um, in BRH, if someone is targeted by shoot from the archers, maybe if they're bolstered, you know, um, and it's going to do a lot of damage, or if you're doing a high key, then you want to line of sight those. And this just makes it very easy to see who it's targeting. Um, and if you have the targeted cast tracker, it will also, also show you uh, with an emphasized progress bar that is targeted on you. Um, this weak aura has most of the important abilities, but if you feel like there, you know, there may be something missing, then on the Wago page for these weak auras, there's very specific instructions on how you can add extra abilities into these weak auras. 
And if you're a healer along with this, uh, there's a Grey Weak Aura which lights up the border on your party frames, it just attaches to the frame itself, and then if someone's targeted by something important, then it's going to make their frame glow, um, and then show you show the icon of the ability that's targeting them. That way you can prepare a little bit better for the incoming damage. Uh, for this week, especially since we have explosive, you, we have the orb marker. Now, if you're a tank and you use plater, there is a very easy way to do this because the orbs don't have an aggro table, so you can set them to always have a different color. And if you're a tank, you can very easily tell which are the orbs and which are the adds. But if you're a DPS, you're very likely not going to have aggro on anything and you need some sort of weak aura to differentiate the orbs from all of the adds on the nameplates. So this weak aura just makes the orbs nameplates glow or the explosives nameplates glow. And for this to work, you have to make sure to enable the um, enemy nameplates because it, that's what it attaches to. And if you don't have them enabled, then the weak aura won't work. And if you're a ranged DPS, uh, we have the quaking timer. This is pretty important because as we know, it's, it interrupts and silences you if you're casting while it goes off. And quaking happens at regular intervals. It's not random if you happen to not know that. Uh, so it can be tracked by weak aura. And this weak aura just gives you a nice little progress bar countdown with uh, whenever quaking is going to happen. That way you can prepare for it and not be silenced. Um, other than this, guys, there's a few other weak auras that you can import and find on Wago if you want to do like a sanguine tracker. Whenever you're standing in sanguine, it's going to yell at you. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much all of the important weak auras that I suggest using. Especially if you're pushing higher keys, this weak aura setup and add-on setup will provide you with plenty of information about, uh, you know, how many interrupts you have available, who should be interrupting if they have Sefus. You can very easily tell your group's HP and everything. Uh, I've been pushing, like I said, some higher keys and this setup worked amazing for me so far. That's all I have for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit the like button, and I will be putting out more Mythic Plus videos, uh, mainly focused around Blood DK since that's what I'm playing, and then all of the raid content will still be Frost DK, and now I'm start starting to dabble in Unholy a little bit, but we'll see how that goes. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.